Nothing was to my surprise. This is what was I expected. It was it was a blissful experience. What brings me today to Artha Forum is the curiosity to know that what business with purpose stands for. I think it is very good, you know, like when I when I heard Swami Ji speak. If we don't discover that love that is within our own hearts, which is the very principle of yoga, the principle of dharma, then we're in poverty. In fact, when he started speaking, he's, you, you saw the audience, they were all glued to him, pin drop silence, and it was just fantastic, it was amazing. that it, it enlightens your ideas, it lightens your life. It's really, really transformational, I mean. I'm sure it will change my life and people who have attended here, their life will also be transformed. And uh, apart from that, the beautiful uh, keynote speakers who spoke about different topics. I'm 110%, I'm very much satisfied and look forward. This would give a meaning, not only meaning, a cutting edge to all my entrepreneurs, uh, colleagues and friends and uh, clients in Mumbai. I think these kind of events should happen uh, across the year. You know, it's like bathing every day, you need to cleanse yourself and these kind of events can cleanse your soul. Touching. Wonderful. I think it was very enlightening. Very, very excellent. Tremendous. I'm sure I'm going to change my perspective. So it's empowering people in short. And now, finally, we have been waiting for our keynote speaker, His Holiness Radhanath Swami. And before I call him to speak and give us words of wisdom, I would like to briefly introduce him. About 40 years ago, there was a young boy in Chicago who had a wonderful material life, and yet he felt that something was missing. He needed to do more with his life than he was. He became an activist in the civil rights movement in the 1970s, and thereafter, he had a calling, a calling to be closer to God. And this calling led him across the continents, across the oceans, and he hitchhiked all the way from Europe to Asia. And he went on this perilous, arduous, and yet very exciting journey right through all the countries of Asia and finally to get to the border of India, where he was stopped. And he was told that mendicants like him had no place here. Disappointed, but yet not willing to give up, this young boy of 19, who is actually known by the name of Richard Slavin, a young Jewish boy from America, sitting on the borders of India, pleaded to our border official, please, sir, let me go in. I promise you, one day, I will do something for your country. And this young boy, at the age of 19, entered India and did wonderful transformational work, first transformed himself, and then moved on to transform societies. And this is the story of none other than His Holiness, Radhanath Swami Maharaj.
Today he is one of our most beloved and respected spiritual teachers, guide, community builder, activist, and acclaimed author. He has written his story, this wonderful, exciting story, which I just gave you a brief about, in his iconic book, The Journey Home. And this has made the New York Times bestseller list. And now he has written the book, The Journey Within, which is also top the list. Radhanath Swami is the founder and coordinator of many spiritual communities in India and throughout the world. He is based in the Radha Gopinath Mandir in Chopati. And over the years, he has empowered people to go ahead and do wonderful philanthropic work, which he is the inspiration behind. And some of these are like the Bhaktivedanta Hospital in Mira Road, the Bhaktivedanta Hospice in Vrindavan, the Midday Meal or the Anamrita, which Sri Ajay Piramal is also very closely connected with, which gives free midday meals to millions of children across India. He is also the founder and the inspiration behind the Govardhan Eco Village, which is also one of our sponsors today. And later on, you will all receive a nice gift bag with many eco-friendly products from the Govardhan Eco Village. Without further ado, I will request Sri Sanjeev Maheshwari to kindly come forward and welcome His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. Sanjeev Maheshwari. Sanjeev, along with Rajiv, is also one of the co-founders of the Artha Forum. And it was with great pleasure that we invite His Holiness Radhanath Swami to give us a few words of enlightenment today. It is my profound honor and pleasure to be among all of you this evening. My special gratitude to our esteemed panel members and to each and every one of you. India has always been recognized by thoughtful people seeking purpose, meaning, and spiritual connection in their lives as the place with the greatest wealth on this planet. Today, India is becoming economically very strong, very influential, but still, our greatest treasure here is our culture. When my guru, Srila Prabhupada, was in London, he was challenged by some reporters. Why have you come to our country? We have our own religion. We have our own way of life. Srila Prabhupada said in response that you British controlled India for almost two centuries. And in that time, you sought the treasures of India in the form of gold and jewels and wealth and labor, and you brought it to London. But you forgot to bring the real treasure of India, its spiritual culture. I have come to give you freely what you forgot to take. In 
India has a historical opportunity in today's times to do incredibly great things for our country itself and for the whole world. If we just recognize where our real wealth is. When I was approaching the Bombay Stock Exchange, I saw a very large, impressive statue of a bull. And I was told this is the symbol of the Bombay Stock Exchange, a bull. I never had a stock in my life. I haven't had a bank account in 47 years. So I asked one of my dear friends who was with me, what does, what does the bull really symbolize? And he said, when there's success in the market going up, something like that. In other words, where there's abundance. In the Vedic literatures, throughout, Dharma is symbolized by a bull. Dharma, in essence, means to perform our occupation with integrity and to live with compassion. Dharma is the basis of real culture and civilization. In the Vedic literatures, there's also a person who was selfish, greedy, envious, and exploitative. His name was Aristasura. He took the form of a bull. So here we have a bull representing dharma and a bull representing adharma. Everything in the Vedas, historical, philosophical, are meant to teach us a lesson to apply to our lives. What does this mean? Two bulls. Bull represents affluence, success, wealth. One represents dharma, goodness, compassion, and one, evil. It means each and every one of us, with whatever we have, we have a choice. And it is how we make our choices that gives our life meaning and purpose or is void of any true meaning or purpose. At every moment, we have a choice. All the great sages, all the great scriptures, all the great kings, all the great business people, through their examples, they are teaching us how to make positive choices that will enrich ourselves, our families, our nations, and our world with actual prosperity. Tonight's Art the Forum is especially dedicated to the late Dr. N.D. Desai. He passed away recently. He was one of the primary inspirations for this cause. because of his example. He strived with all his heart, along with his whole family, to really live by the principles of Dharma. And through that, his companies became bigger and bigger and more and more successful. But he never considered anything to be his own as Mr. Puromo was so nicely explaining. He saw that he, he was a trustee of gifts of God. 
and how he could utilize whatever he has with devotion and compassion was his motivating force to earn profits. Which is a more powerful human influence? Love or greed? Some people think if you don't have greed, you can't really be determined to be successful. That's the consciousness of Arista. But if we have love, we'll be more determined. We'll be willing to work even harder. But that love is the wealth of our heart. If we don't discover that love that is within our own hearts, which is the very principle of yoga, the principle of dharma, then we're in poverty. You can be a wealthy person in a little straw shack or in a magnificent palace. You could be in total poverty in a magnificent palace or in a little straw shack. These things are not so important. Our purpose and our meaning in life, to live with compassion, to live with love, to understand the beauty of seva. Bhagavad Gita tells... Yajkyatva na punara moham evam yashashi pandava. Yena bhutanya sheshani draksyas yatman yatomai. Hari Hari. What is truth? There are so many interpretations of truth. Some people think truth is what I can see, what I can taste, what I could feel. Some people say truth is what the scientists have discovered. Bhagavad Gita tells the eternal principle of truth. When we understand that everything and everyone is a part of God. All living beings are in me, are of me, and are mine, Krishna says. In the second chapter, Krishna gives an explanation that leads us into how to understand this. We're not this body. We are the jiva, the atma. We're the living force, the spirit the consciousness that gives us the power to see and to hear and to think and to feel, to grow and to love. When the living force leaves this body, the body's dead. But actually, it's just like a car without a driver. We are the driver. We are the Atma. The Atma is without birth, without death. Why? Because it's a part of God. The nature of the Atma, the Sanatan Dharma, Savaipung Sangparo Dharma Yatho Bhakti Radhokshi Jaya Hoitaki Aprati Hatha Yatma Suprasidati. Sanatan Dharma. The supreme dharma, the Srimad Bhagavatam declares, is when we live for the purpose of awakening the love and the compassion for the supreme being, for Krishna, and for all living beings. When we recognize who we are, we naturally recognize our relationship with God, Bhagavan, and all living beings. And in that state, we cannot exploit. Greed and exploitation is a pathetic state of inner poverty. 
It's a symptom of ignorance. But yet in the world today, it's praised and it's glorified as being something very glorious. The wisdom of the Gita, the wisdom of the Vedas, the wisdom of the sages, and the wisdoms of the great examples we have here in India and other parts of the world is to teach us what real value is. To awaken that love within our hearts. To live with compassion. To honor that the environment is not ours to exploit. It's, it's Bhumi Devi. The environment is Lakshmi, according to Vedic literatures. She's to be honored because she's sustaining every living being equally. And all living beings are our family, our brothers and our sisters. As we wake up, we recognize that. We will not exploit innocent people for myself or my own family because we recognize everyone is my family. To share, to care, is culture. To live as an example like that and make choices that help us is the greatest contribution we could make to life. Dr. Desai, Ajay Piramo, Mr. Chohan, our Secretary of Chief Minister, they may perform their duties very, very well, and they do. But nobody loves them for that. Nobody will love you for your material achievements or success. People will envy you. People will respect to try to use you. People may fear you. But nobody loves you for what you have. People love you for who you are. People will love you when you represent love, when you represent compassion, when you represent goodness, and when you're willing to make sacrifices for a higher purpose in life. Applied spirituality universally is this, the willingness to make our focus and our goal the higher principle of love, of compassion, of seva. And people will love us for that. People will actually respect and appreciate us for that. This Artha Forum is a legacy for people like Dr. Desai, who will live forever as a soul (laughs) and whose life will live forever through the inspiration of his example. There's nothing the world needs more than examples. Examples of living with dharma. The poverty of the world, the oppression, the bigotry, the racism, these are all just symptoms of a disease a disease that we're disconnected from our own self. We're disconnected from who we are and what is really purposeful and meaningful in our life. Yoga is to make that connection. When you water the root of a tree, it naturally extends to all parts of the tree, the leaves, the flowers, and the branches. And similarly, when we learn how to live in harmony with our own true self, with Krishna, then we naturally 
our love, our compassion will extend to everyone because we care from our hearts. In the Mahabharat, Arjuna had bows and arrows and he was organizing an army. Duryodhana had bows and arrows and he was organizing armies. Arjuna and Duryodhana were actually doing the exact same thing. But there was a difference, the purpose. Arjuna was doing it to protect the innocent and Duryodhana was doing it to exploit the innocent. In a similar way, whatever our occupation, whatever our social position, we have the choice to follow Arjuna or to follow Duryodhana, to use what we have, our intelligence, our abilities, our wealth, for the goodness of humanity, for the real purpose of of inner fulfillment and happiness and sharing that, or to hurt our own souls and others. Mr. Piramo quoted from the Ramayana, Ravana took Lakshmi or Sita to exploit her. She represents wealth. She represents fortune. He did pretty good for a while. He had the most glorious palace in the world. He built a city out of solid, pure gold. Could anyone do that today? Even the greatest billionaires cannot build a city of solid, pure gold. And his palace, it describes in Ramayana, it was not lit with light bulbs. It was lit with diamonds and rubies and emeralds and precious jewels. And he had Sita. But how long did it last? Because he was trying to exploit. Everything was finished. And Hanuman, he represents devotion and compassion, dharma. He brought Sita back to give her happiness, to be once again united with Ram. I'm just a little Swami who doesn't really have much of anything, but I'm really, really enlivened to be in the Bombay Stock Exchange (laughs) because I really feel the influence of this room can affect the whole country and the whole world. And each, each and every one of us, big or small, we can make a big difference. In the Ramayan, they were building the bridge to Sri Lanka. Hanuman was carrying massive mountains. And he saw on his path a little spider that was just pushing one little grain of sand at a time to build the bridge. And he was actually blocking Hanuman's way. Hanuman was waiting for him to move. Ram told Hanumanji, he's doing every bit as much as you. He's doing, that little spider is working, serving according to his capacity for this higher cause. And you're working according to your capacity, according to this higher purpose. The real wealth of life is to tune into that higher purpose of being instruments of God's grace in whatever we do. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Your Holiness, for sharing those pearls of wisdom with us and reminding us that truly every moment we have the choice to make to enrich our lives. And the choice that we should be making is to make the goal of our life the higher principle of love, compassion, and seva. And with this, we would like to release the book, which is Business with a Purpose. I would request uh, the helpers to kindly bring the book and give a copy to each of them that we can release it. And I would like to just say that this book is in the memory of late Dr. Narendra Desai, who His Holiness Radhanath Swami just spoke about. And he was one of the wholehearted supporters and inspiration behind the founding of the Artha Forum. Dr. Narendra Desai would actively participate and speak at all Artha Forum events, both in India and abroad. He was the blend of an intrepid Indian industrialist, philanthropist, and spiritualist. And he was a practitioner of applying spiritual principles of the Gita of Chanakya Pandit in business. And he would inspire the younger generation to use these to solve modern day business problems. So with that, we release business with a purpose. And all of you will get a chance to have a copy of this book as you leave the hall. And you will receive this in your gift bag. And with that, thank you so much for releasing the book. We have the vote of thanks by uh, Mr. Kushal Desai, the Chairman and Managing Director of Apar Industries. It is my honor and privilege uh, to make this uh, vote of thanks. I would like uh, to begin by thanking uh, Sri Ashish Chauhan for making this venue available for us and being so enthusiastic in, uh, in hosting this event for us for a second time in a row and I'm sure there will be many more occasions to come. To uh, Sri Ajay Piramal, who has been a great supporter of the Artha Forum, has spoken at several events and has shared uh, his wisdom with us um, on, on many occasions. Uh, to Mr. Uh, Praveen Pardeshi, who has just left, uh, left us for the time and uh, effort that he uh, took out of his busy schedule. Uh, to Sri, uh, and of course to His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, who has been the very essence of um, the inspiration to Rajiv, myself, and Sanjeev uh, to actually get Artha Forum uh, started up and try to share this with, uh, with many other like-minded uh, entrepreneurs. I'd also like to take this uh, opportunity uh, to acknowledge the presence of uh, General Mathur. Uh, he's a general officer commanding for uh, Goa, Gujarat, and uh, Maharashtra. Thank you, sir, for coming. Um, uh, IACC, who've been part of our uh, sponsors, and Dr. Lalit Kanodia, who's, who's here with us. Mr. Dhanpal Javeri from uh, Thai, uh, and uh, Mr. Mangal Prabhat Loda, and Mr. Purohit. Um, I would also like to thank all the event partners that we've had. Um, Artha is, uh, the Artha Forum is uh, a voluntary organization, and many people have uh, put their hands up to help organize this and come forward. So I'd like to, uh, to thank the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, uh, Piramal Enterprises, Basil Partners, Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, uh, Anamrita, and the Food for Life program, the Bombay Stock Exchange, uh, Thai, the chapter of Mumbai, the Arvind Mafatlal Group, Govardhan Eco Village, the Apar Group, and Share Your Care. Um, and I'd just like to take another, uh, a, a, a few moments before um, signing off and inviting everybody uh, for dinner. 
um, a thought uh, reminds me of, you know, uh, something that my late father uh, was very fond of, uh, of talking about and, and reading from, which is the Artha Shastra, part of, you know, our ancient scriptures. And this incident uh, is one which I can never forget. Um, you know, at the age of 16, uh, my father called me and he said that, you know, so far I've been your parent for the first 16 years. From now on, I will be your friend. And this is what actually Chanakya Pandit taught uh, in the Arsha Shastra. And then he took it one step further. And when I turned uh, 32 years of age, he said that as per Chanakya Pandit's teaching in the Arsha Shastra, at the age of 32, the son should become an equal partner in business. And so at that age, he actually took the shareholding that he had and split it exactly three ways between himself, myself, and my brother. And so actually, you know, today's uh, day and age succession planning is such a difficult thing. Business families end up actually having a lot of quarrel and disturbance. Brothers fight. Uh, parents, fathers are not able to let go until they uh, find themselves in the grave. So this was a wonderful example, actually, that he, that he said. And this wisdom actually came from the Artha Shastra. And this is some of the stuff which Artha Forum tries to bring to everybody here which is this ancient knowledge um, that has relevance in today's uh, modern world. So with that, I'd like to sign off. Thank you so much. Uh, you've been a wonderful audience. Um, very uh, attentive and patient. And I hope that you join us for future Artha events. And I'd like to invite all of you to please have uh, dinner. We thought we still have a few minutes to nine before our dinner is served. So if there's anybody who would like to ask any questions, please, the mic will be passed around and you're free to ask. We'll just have a very quick 10 minute Q&A. So would you like to raise your hand? We have um, a cordless mic being passed around. Yes, please. Swamiji, this question is for you. I think you brought up a very interesting concept of purpose. And you also use the analogy of actions, which are identical, but having different purpose. I think this is a moral dilemma that most people in business today face, is to how do you align your actions with, you know, what is your inner calling or your purpose? If you could just elaborate a little bit, you know, it was a great example, but I think in today's modern context, how would you essentially provide advice and guidance? Thank you. There are three principles that are held very sacred. Within all true spiritual and dharmic traditions, there is satana. Sadhana means to have a spiritual practice which actually helps us to reconnect with our own true values and purpose. Hearing from people with realization from, this, from the great scriptures, this is the second principle, satsang, to be with people who inspire us. The Alcoholics Anonymous organization has helped more people who are alcoholics than any other organization in the, sec in, in, in the world. And they have basic universal spiritual principles that they they come together with. And I remember I was in California just a couple of years ago, and one of my friends, he's a very affluent person, very influential person. He went through a severe crisis in his life. He was an alcoholic in the past. He was sober about 20 years. But when this crisis came, it was practically impossible for him 
to not turn back to alcohol because he was really in a gloomy state. But the people from his Alcoholics AA chapter, they were with him day and night. They weren't paid for it because they knew how vulnerable he would be. So they stayed with him. They spoke to him. They took him places. <laughs> and when I met him, he said, they saved my life. Satsang is a principle like that. When we're with people who really care about us on a spiritual and moral level, they give us great strength. The redwood tree is the tallest, biggest tree in the world. And it withstands earthquakes, massive storms, blizzards, keeps growing. Because the roots underground, they reach out and they connect to each other. The roots embrace and make a bond with each other. Their unity is their strength. This is satsang where we actually come together with people who give us spiritual strength, inspiration, and clarity of vision. And sadhana is when we take that inspiration and have a spiritual practice, prayer, meditation. In our tradition, we chant Krishna's names. And it actually gives us that, that connection, that divine connection. And next is sadachar, with what we've been given, we live with integrity. We spend with compassion. So action, in our Juna sense, was because he listened to the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna. <laughs> he had that good association with Yudhisthira. He had good satsang, and he had a good sadhana. Duryodhana, he didn't have any sadhana. And he chose to be with people like Sakuni, <laughs> who only increased his greed. So we need to be with good people, and we need to have a good spiritual practice. And then we will actually have the power to withstand temptations and fears and obstacles and actually live with integrity. The real action that we can look forward to through our yoga, through our spiritual connection, as Mr. Chohan was explaining, is happiness. Param drishtvani vartate the Gita tells, Vishaya vinivartante nira harasya dehina rasavaraja marasopyasya param drishvani vartate. When we experience that higher happiness that is within ourselves, there's no greater joy than to share that th through our action, through everything we do. The, the truth of our inner connection, of our religion, of our spirituality, of our yoga, is not just what we talk about. That's part of it. But the real testimony is in our actions, in how we live, in how we treat other people. Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, the question is to Swamiji. As one of the speakers said very clearly at every stage of life, what gives you pleasure keeps changing from 15 years to 20 years to 25 years. And by the time we reach you, it's the different desires, different pleasures. So my question to you is that, sir, or Swamiji, that unless we reach our desires, what we desired at, all, at any point of time in our, any stage of life, Aren't we reaching the closer to the moksha? It's like when a person is being hanged, you always ask him, what's your last desire? What we can do for you? Or in our Hindu mythology or Hindu culture, you say, Are se pucho, I'll speak in Hindi. What is his last desire? Ganga jal dal do, atma ko shanti mil jayegi. So what do you have to say 
between the desires at any stage of life in while a person is living and getting a moksha like you have achieved your desires to be a great man because you wanted to be you wanted to live for humans you're living well but what about others there's a businessman sitting next to you there's a bsc uh, head sitting next to you and there are many of them like this general sitting over here he's officiating general officer commanding there was a desire for him to command maharashtra goa and gujarat area because i'm next army officer so what do you have to say about desire versus moksha versus what we have achieved in our life thank you In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells, "Sarvataraman purutya sha mame kam sharanam praja aham tvam sarva papi pyo moksha yi sasi macha cha." That the essence of all dharma is sharanagati. Sharanagati, or English translation, could be surrender. it's not just a concept it is a way of living yat karoshi rashnasi yashohoshi tatasya that what we do what we speak what we give in charity what we have we understand it's for the purpose of making an offering to the supreme using it with devotion and compassion that's the highest dharma prema pumar to mahan to find that love within ourself and then our de- desires are based on that love moksha means to be without material ego without material desires the vedic literature is explain that that doesn't mean we just become blank it means we have spiritual desires it means we have the desire that is our true nature to utilize everything we have and everything we are and everything we know in union with the supreme that is the perfection of moksha and that is something that is beyond birth and death padam padam yadvi padam natesham because at any moment for any of us we don't know what the next circumstance will be disease tragedy death they can come to anyone at any time in the stock exchange intelligence is making a wise investment yes <laughs> and my dear friends ananda brindavan ji you know he's very very expert at helping people make the best possible investments from a life perspective if you were told that you invest all your money all your wealth everything you have in this stock and i guarantee you you're going to lose everything will you invest in that but everything we invest our life in at death we lose everything but the soul's eternal yoga doesn't mean to renounce the world it means to use the things of the world and to engage our occupation in such a way that we're investing in to the eternal reality of our hearts our souls 
We can speak to our children so many things, but ultimately, it's our example that's going to mold their values in life. We can teach our children how to make investments that are in harmony with their eternal soul. Those desires are divine desires. <laughs>